Okay, um, so we have our third speaker now um, ready to go. Um, I would love to introduce to the stage or welcome to the stage Wadi Tari. Uh, and yes, and yes. Wadi, please please correct my pronunciation if I did a poor job. Uh, CEO mm -hmm. of uh, Digixer, uh, and uh, yeah. and welcome to this to the uh, to API Days London. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Carl. Uh, so let's uh, let's get uh, the screen up. There we go. Um, the floor is yours. I will exit stage left. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, hi everybody. So uh, I will be presenting uh, one of the most important uh, challenging topics about API security, API management, which is API security, and uh, and I will present the challenges and the solutions uh, about uh, this topic. So the schedule, so I present the OWASP top 10 of the APIs. Uh, so OWASP is uh, an acronym for uh, Open Web Application uh, uh, Project. And so I will present the threats, the solutions, uh, and I will present one of the most important uh, standards of the market, OWASP 2, OpenID Connect, and uh, um, something about traffic management. SSO and uh, some API manager solutions and what they offer uh, about API uh, security. So let's move on to the first. Uh, yeah. So it, it is the uh, top 10 uh, API security uh, threats or flows uh, defined by OWASP uh, community. So we can, um, so we can, so we know the, the most of them, so broken object level authorization, uh, broken user authentication, so the excessive data exposure for um, some APIs. Uh, we can uh, find sort of the lack of resources and rate limiting, the broken uh, function level authorization, mass assignment, security misconfiguration, injection. So we have uh, many kinds of injection flaws and improper assets management and insufficient logging and monitoring. So. I will be pre I will present the five or six most important ones. So the first um, uh, threat is broken object level authorization. So this is also known as uh, insecure direct object reference, and uh, it is uh, presented when the hacker uh, can substitute an ID of resource and they use another uh, ID to get access to uh, to a resource uh, and it is not authorized to to do so um, so this is a risk uh, to get so to get uh, access to api resources and he can disclose data or he can uh, he can do malicious uh, tax on it uh, broken function level authorization so it is due to improper or a lack of uh, uh, access controls on the API uh, resources, and it is um, it is the use case when we when the user or hacker use another uh, account, another account uh, privilege of users like admin to get access to uh, to some functions on the server on the API uh, to get to the to the to the resources or the assets of of a server, and uh, and uh, it can imper impersonate. So it is due to lack of uh, authorization or uh, let's say weak authorization at the API level. So the, the, the risk here is to disclose data uh, and to take over full accounts of, uh, uh, on the, uh, of, uh, the IPS server. So broken user authentication is like when uh, attacker get the session uh, of a connected user. Uh, and uh, th this connected user will be the victim of this operation. So he intercepts the session or something about the session and he gets to the server uh, and he can yeah, impersonate the server. He can do malicious attacks and he can execute, uh, let's say, malicious programs. And the most important risks here are to steal uh, some sensitive data to take, o take over uh, full accounts or the impersonation of uh, user accounts. So the excessive data exposure, uh, it's like when the API expose a lot more data 
than what his uh, client like, what are client uh, apps need from this API. And the attack vectors could be a brute force or credential stuffing uh, to get to those data and disclose them uh, to the to the public. So the lack of resources and rate limiting, uh, it's an abuse of API, of an API or API resources that leads to a high consumption of the resources uh, at the resource server. And it will make the servers, uh, the server unavailable, for example, and uh, the attacks can go directly to the assets of the organization of the server, and uh, he can uh, he can uh, damage it. So the most important uh, risk here is denial of service at the at the server end. So the injection is very known for uh, say APIs, API risks. So when we when some when the hacker injects malicious code through the API, and this code will get executed on the server or the data, database, uh, and it will uh, damage let's say the, the the an application, and we can we know some some of kind of some uh, kinds of uh, injections like SQL injection or OS or LDAP LDAP injection. So the the risks are loss of data or data breach or a denial of service uh, so we can prevent this uh, security flow by input data validation at api level so so the security misconfiguration is another uh, well-known uh, flow security flow at api level so it is due to a poor configuration or misconfiguration of uh, the api servers that allow packets to get to the to the api and damage the, the server applications. So let's here move to the solutions. So what are the solutions for all of those uh, API security flows? So I identify from my experience, work experience on APIs uh, three, uh, let's say, important uh, aspects to, to protect API. So authorization, uh, identity access management, and traffic management. So the authorization. It's like a mechanism that will allow clients uh, to get access to use uh, the API, the API or API resources, only if they are authorized to using tokens. And so they are uh, a standard market. The standard market of the of authorization is what to. And for the identity access management, so the end users of the uh, if the if the client app should get authenticated, authenticated to a system which is an SSO or an IDP, identity provider, before uh, his client app uh, can get access to the APIs. So, uh, so this authentication will be delegated by an authorization server at the API level, and this uh, authorization server will delegate this authentication request to, uh, to the SSO, the IDP, like Okta or other. And the third one is traffic management. So this is um, this is a very uh, relevant uh, mechanism uh, that we implement at API level to uh, set up like like quotas or spike uh, to filter or to limit or to put uh, to put uh, throttling at API level and to secure the API from uh, from let's say a huge number of traffic traffic calls. Uh, launched by clients. So let's move on to the to the authorization uh, standards. So it's OAuth two. So we, we there is one uh, let's say spec uh, about IETF so generated by IETF OAuth two point one is in the draft uh, version. So this is uh, the authorization framework. So the application. So we can define the application, the end user. The, uh, the authorization, authorization server and the resource server. Those are the, the actors of the authorization framework. So the end user can uh, get access uh, to an API to a server when he gets a token uh, from the authorization server. And, and the authorization server can authenticate the user uh, by delegating this call to the IDP, to the SSO. Uh, and once this uh, user is authenticated. We can get a token. It's your token, JWT token, 
that uh, include the user claims, user information, and uh, this, this token could be used by system or applications uh, to exchange uh, information about the, uh, about the user. So the token, the opaque token, the token that will be used by the app is generated by the OAuth uh, authorization server. So we can, uh, you can get to the spec here, is RFC 6749. So the OpenID Connect is another uh, standard, it's an identity layer which is built on what uh, two uh, protocol and it allows clients to identify uh, the end users uh, and those users will be authenticated on the SSU system or IDP system that should be uh, uh, trust, uh, trusted by the authorization server or the, the resource server that hosts the API. So the SSO, we talk a lot about SSO, single sign-on. Uh, it is a system that allows the user uh, to connect once, uh, to authenticate once. It's simpler for, uh, and more convenient uh, so that it, he can get access to all applications without reconnecting or authenticating again. Uh, and it is uh, used uh, when we set up this IAM, Identity Access Management, and it can allow uh, stronger passwords, or uh, better password policy enforcement. We, uh, so some SSO can uh, offer some multi-factor authentication. It's a kind of advanced authentication. And we can, uh, so we know the most important um, IDPs or SSOs uh, of the market, which, is, which are Okta, CyberArk, Ping Identity, One Login. So here, uh, I just wanted to talk about some API management solutions. I have worked to, uh, particularly on APG, the API management of, sort of, of Google. So those API management solutions uh, have the goal to provide, uh, let's say, some policies, technical models uh, that allow implementing and securing APIs uh, at the integration level. So it will facilitate this security among of other uh, uh, let's say features and uh, those solutions provide other uh, policies like jwt policy policies or caching or or uh, let's say uh, uh, protecting let's say the apis from octa from um, traffic uh, spike traffic so uh, so those api manager solutions we are a real asset for any organization to facilitate and to ease the governance of APIs and security. So thank you very, very much. Uh, if you have any questions about this, so, and this is how you can contact me. Uh, excellent. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Wadi, thank yeah. you for that, uh, that introduction. Um, so I think that perhaps the the most obvious question would be um, if you're sitting down with a with an organization you're talking about the API uh, top 10 um, what are the, what's a first step or a next step that you would recommend uh, that any organization should take to evaluate whether they have risk exposure so uh, I think the first step is to identify the risk flows they can uh, so the apis can present like uh, like for example if there is uh, an a lot of uh, traffic to the to the uh, APIs. So we identify the risks. Then we suggest, uh, let's say, some uh, API security features to protect their API. So identifying the risks depending on their uh, APIs, uh, whether they are uh, public or private APIs, and then we suggest the convenient, adequate solutions for them. For them. So we spend a lot of time in in the in the API top ten talking about authentication. Um, so you shared the the OAuth model, but what's what's the mistake that we're making? Why why does authentication keep getting compromised? Because the OAuth as a model is not is not new. It's not um, yeah, yeah. Not particularly complicated to be frank. Yes. Um, but what why yeah. why do we why do we keep making authentication mistakes? What's going wrong? Yeah. So because uh, OAuth two is an authorization framework, it will. So it is um, intended to, 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 let's say, to protect APIs, uh, for, let's say, from, uh, let's say, from client apps who are not authorized to get access to, the, to those APIs. 
but those apps will be used by end users and some uh, apps uh, could be uh, public public apps so since they are not uh, let's say trusted are known by the organization so we need to authenticate the users against uh, against let's say some SSO systems and uh, that's why we need another standard or policy to authenticate users so this is the way so it's a way of authenticate the user of the app um, and earlier today, we talked a little bit um, with actually a couple couple of speakers mentioned um, Kubernetes and um, like uh, new workload types. Um, perhaps they don't go through a gateway at all. Perhaps they might use something like an event broker or or maybe a, a sort of the orchestrator itself may may serve that functionality. Um, what do you see out in the future? What's when the technical landscape? Uh, you know, from technology trends or threat trends, how will the API security top ten change um, uh, down the road and, and what do we need to be ready for in the future? I think the, uh, for me, the most important uh, risk or flow will be, uh, let's say, authenticating, uh, let's say, the users external or internal of the organization. So, so, get, uh, so authenticating users, some of the uh, risks are to, let's say, to uh, to compromise the assets of uh, of a server organization uh, using let's say some some uh, public cloud apps so we need to set this uh, so this uh, protocol to uh, to use the best uh, yam solution identity and access manager solution and the best uh, the best uh, authorization framework so but what is dealing with the kubernetes so for me it is to for container management. So what is the? I didn't get the question here about Kubernetes. Um, there was a there was a brief discussion earlier about how, um, uh, for I example, uh, I, I, would call, I would call it the the Kubernetes is sort of like a now it's a, it's a new surface, right? Yeah. And so there's a the, there's the the opportunity at least to put in an authentication layer, um, perhaps at the container or the orchestrator layer, um, in addition to the services layer that we traditionally think of as as um as api so um just we can a, talk a, about a, api ops we can talk about api ops it's like uh, the new trend to automate uh, mm -hmm. the api industry and yeah it could be kubernetes one of the tools uh, yeah to to set up uh, this api ops uh, trend so how to automate deploying apis and in in terms of uh, organizations you know developing a, a, a response to, to security risk to APIs. Do you see any, um, like, what are the, what are the common barriers or, or, or misconceptions? What's, what's standing in the way of an organization moving forward into a, um, like a, a hygiene, uh, responsible state of, of the API? For me, uh, there's, uh, there was one mistake, uh, let's say used by some, some of, uh, organizations. So to use, let's say, uh, Let's say a standard. Let's say the policy like OpenID Connect uh, in the right in the wrong uh, situation. So they use JWT tokens, for example, uh, to secure an API. Uh, so this is not intended to. So your tokens or OpenID Connect is uh, it is not a, uh, a concurrent of OAuth two. So we can use them together. So this so so the I think the problem is to use the right uh, standard. The, the right policy in the right situation. So we can use what to to authenticate to authorize APIs and secure APIs with the uh, client apps, and we can use uh, OpenID Connect for every authentication between, uh, let's say, an API platform and the internal uh, applications. So so that we can uh, propagate the user claims between apps in uh, an organization. We shouldn't use JWT tokens in the public, I mean, with the public ecosystem. So understanding standards and use them in the right situations. Um, I'm going to ask if you can leave us with uh, two, two yeah. data points. Uh, first is, um, do we have uh, your contact information on one of the slides? Let's share that again. So if anybody wants yeah, to reach out again, we would um, make sure that's available. Um, and then the second thing is, can you provide uh, advice um, Training, resources, uh, things that you'd, you'd recommend to professionals 
um, to sort of further their knowledge of the, the, the whether it's API top 10 or, or, or otherwise, um, what resources can you advise others to? Um, yeah, so <laughs> since I'm uh, Google APG certified and I have almost four years working with the API management, uh, so I can, yeah, I can uh, provide uh, APG, uh, APG trainings, uh, especially for security, indeed, like uh, OAT2 and how to integrate SSO system with API platform based on APG. So I have already done that for one client in France. Uh, so setting up uh, API security on APG, and I can train and uh, help organizations to set uh, to set this security using APG, especially. Uh, we can present the the risk the risks uh, the say of. Uh, so it will depend on the, on the API landscape of each organization. We can do an audit and define the risks those APIs will be uh, exposed to. Then we can uh, consider any solutions and the best uh, the best standards we can use to protect them. Um, so I think that puts us uh, at our time. Um, yeah. Um, and I, I didn't see any questions in the window, but certainly um, please do. Um, um, you know, reach out to Wadi. We, we don't have a ton of time with each speaker, but, um, you know, everyone makes themselves available. And again, for everybody in the audience, these uh, these sessions will be available uh, online um, in a few days' time. Uh, so any, we should be able to go back. Uh, everybody should be able to go back and, and replay sessions um, and go back into the material in, in detail uh, yeah. later on. So This um, is my email if, uh, if you need any yeah, contact. Perfect. Me. All right. Uh, thank you, Wadi. Have a great thank day, you. and uh, thank you for thank joining you. us. Thank you, Kyle.